Hi there and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe Gardner and in this series of videos I'm going to be teaching you how to get familiar with your new lathe. All the basic principles you're going to need to turn into a machining wizard. So in today's video I want to cover all the tooling that you're going to need on your lathe whether it be measuring tools or cutting tools. You're going to need to know what tools are going to do what job. So today I'm going to cover all the tools that I think you're going to need to start off with as a basic and you can always grow your collection from there but for me these are what I needed to get started when I first bought my lathe. Let's start off by talking about cutting tools. So there are three different types of conventional cutting tools we use on the lathe. We've got carbide insert tooling on the left on the right we've got high speed steel tooling and in the middle we have carbide braze tooling. Just to let you know it doesn't look like this I just don't own any carbide brazed tooling. So at first glance you might be thinking well what do I use it for? What types of purpose would I need this over something like this? Well Let's go through that right now. So, to be fair, the reason I've got a vast collection of carbide insert tooling compared to high speed steel tooling is I just like the convenience of when an ed edge gets blunt, just being able to rotate it and swap it out. It's so easy. And to be fair, the price of these things aren't a massive, you know, they're not massive. A lot of people on YouTube and on forums will tell you that for a mini lathe you don't need carbide insert tooling, it's a waste of money, it's expensive and you just don't get the job done. Well I'm here to tell you that is a load of rubbish. Without this carbide tooling I would not have been able to do the lightsaber. I tried using a few of these high speed steel tools on the lightsaber and they just blunted instantly just because the 304 stainless is so much harder than these tools. So in that essence, I needed to use the carbide tooling. Also, while we're on the conversation of these carbide toolings, just to give you a rough idea, you normally buy them and they come in like a pack of 10. So this at the minute is my favorite tool that I've been using, I just find it so convenient. And to give you a rough price estimate, a pack of 10 of these cost, I think it was around about 12 pounds. So no way is that gonna break the bank, I would say for most people. Right, let's go through a few of the basic shapes and designs of these tools that you're gonna need to know. These are the three main categories of tools that you need to know the difference of. Once you know the difference between these, Selecting what tool you need is so, so much easier. So starting down here, I only have two of these. So I'm gonna bring them close up. These are almost really thin blades. So what you use these for on the lathe is parting off. Parting off is essentially where you've got a bit of material, you wanna split it down the middle or split it anywhere along there. So you basically use your parting tool and you very slowly plunge into that until the end parts off. Very straightforward. So one of these I've got in high speed steel, the other is a carbide insert. So that is the number one tool that you need to know about. Tool number two. Now I've only got one type of these. These are actually all the same tool. So these cut threads into your metal. This tip here has got a 60 degree cutting angle on it and that makes the conventional threads that we use in everyday threading. You do get more different types of threads, but for what I'm using at the minute, these are perfect. So these here are used for threading. Now, this massive array of tools that I've got back here, all of these are used to just take off material and shape metal in a certain way. But in principle, all of these are doing the same thing. They're all just taking off metal to turn down the material to the size I want. Doesn't matter what shape, 
these are they all serve the same purpose and that purpose like I've just said is to take down material so we'll get into it a bit more when I actually start teaching you how to use the lathe itself but for now all you need to know is all of these are just used for when you need to turn down metal if you think of these cutting tools here a little bit like these tools here we have a 17 mil spanner a 3 8 ratchet with a 17 mil socket on and an adjustable spanner set to 17 mil now say for example we wanted to do this 17 mil bolt up all of these are going to be able to do that up but depending on the position and area that this bolt is some of these might not be suitable to do that bolt up for example imagine the situation if we had this bolt sunken down into a recess then the spanner an adjustable spanner isn't going to be able to do that up you're going to have to use the socket to be able to get down into that recess so that analogy is a little bit like these tools they all do the same sort of job but given the situation that they're in depends on what one you will need so as you get into using the lathe a little bit more you'll become more familiar with knowing what tool is best for what application you're doing but that is something we're going to learn on our journey together as I teach you how to use the lathe. Now hopefully that's covered the cutting tools. Moving on we're going to go through a few basic bits of measuring equipment you're going to need to get into machining. So I've just quickly grabbed three different types of measuring tooling that I, I personally think you need when you first get into machining. Not to say you need this first of all when you start learning how to turn down stock but when you learn how to get things to a set measurement that you need this is where you're going to need tools like this so just a quick overview this right here is a dial test indicator it basically has a very high precision tip on the end there which is connected to this dial and that measures up and down movement so this is really good for measuring run out in your in your parts and run out in your tools it's not something you're going to have to worry about when you first need to start making chips but it is something to consider in the future next we have a set of vernier calipers so these vernier calipers here are just a really basic set that i bought off amazon i think it was i like the fact that they've got this dial on there and it makes it just really easy just to see how big or small parts are on a quick scale. If you haven't got a set of these, I'd advise this probably be your first purchase to make when trying to measure things, because this is the first thing I'll go to grab when I need to measure something at a quick glance. So this is a vernier caliper, and like I said, this type that I've got is the dial type, and I just find it really good, really. So when the vernier caliper isn't good enough for what I need to measure, and I need something really precise and accurate. This is when I go to my micrometers. So this is my micrometer that measures 0 to 25 mil, and it goes down to 0.01 millimeter of accuracy. So that is a super accurate bit of kit. I wouldn't say you need to buy these straight away when you're getting into machining, because it's not something I bought until I've been machining a few months, but it's definitely something to consider when you want to start machining more accurate parts. And finally, the last bit of tooling that I recommend that you get when you first start out in machining and using a lathe are these Morse Taper 2 attachments. So briefly in the first video, I told you about the tailstock and how the tailstock at the time I had a live center in it. So the tailstock on my lathe uses a Morse Taper 2 and I would say 99% of Chinese mini laves or just mini laves are also going to use a Morse taper too. So because of that, there's quite a few array of different tooling you can get to fit in there. This right here is what's known as a live center. It basically spins the middle bit and keeps this bit solid, which is really good if you want to add some support to the end of your work. Also, I've got this keyless chuck. 
really nice bit of tooling there again on a Morse taper too so if I ever need to do any drilling I can just attach that to the tail stock and drill anything out I need to this goes all the way up to 16 mil and if you get reduced shanks it can go even bigger than that as well as live centers you can get these which are like dead centers which they don't spin at all so you've got to be careful when doing any high speed machining with these because you can burn the tips of them out but that is like a really basic tool and a lot of lathes you'll actually get that with it when you first buy it as you get more into machining you find that you might start modifying tools to fit as well so this right here is a Morse taper to um, blank arbor which I basically machined out to fit a dedicated 3mm drill bit and just put a grub screw on there just to secure it all in. So yeah, like I said, as you get into machining, you might find that you need a special tool for a certain purpose. And because of that, you might find yourself just modifying tooling. Hopefully then, this array of tools on the bench has given you a rough idea of what you're going to need to go out and purchase to start using your Chinese mini lathe or just mini lathe. Like I said, when it comes to tooling, don't be scared about it. I would advise to sticking to either high speed steel or if you're feeling a bit flush, some carbide insert tooling. For me, these are a must, but depending on your budget, depends on what you can stretch to. So I hope that bit of information on tooling has helped you guys out and maybe made up your mind into which tools you're going to go with. Like I said, I highly recommend at least getting a vernier caliper for measuring. And if you're going to do any big work on the lathe, get yourself a live centre because they're really handy. As for cutting tools, I think high speed steel or carbide insert tooling, I would go with either or both if your budget can stretch to it. I personally prefer carbide insert tooling just for the convenience of being able to swap the tips out and also it can cut much harder metals. So that's all for tooling. In the next video, we're finally going to be getting onto the lathe and making some chips where I'm going to be showing you your first procedure and that procedure is facing off. So I'll teach you all the good techniques to use and show you how exactly to do it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and if you haven't already, go back and watch the first video in this series, the basic introduction into the lathe. See you in the next one, guys.